very good afternoon to you, Professor John Hassler, Prize Committee Member. Now, um, the laureates of the Prize in Economic Sciences have just been announced as Thomas J. Sargent and Christopher A. Sims for their research on cause and effect in the macroeconomy. Can you just provide us with the main lines of motivation from the committee as to why the prize has been awarded to these two individuals? So, there is a great interest in understanding what's happening to the economy when, when economic policy changes. Uh, but if we want to observe from data, uh, uh, try to estimate from data these effects, it's of course of key importance to understand what caused what. Yes. And th this, is, this is difficult when you observe uh, only data. And a main complication is that uh, uh, an important driver of human behavior is expectations about the future. Right? And we can't really observe expectations. What expectations did people have? What went on in their minds when they, when they made their decisions? Right? And when, when, the, when the laureates made their seminal contributions, this was of course well understood. Uh, but it was not really understood how we could incorporate that in macroeconomic models. So what they have done is to develop methods that make it possible to distinguish cause and effect uh, in macroeconomic data, and then we can answer questions like what happens to unemployment, what happens to GDP if an interest rate is changed or if you change the inflation target. Right. So what would you say the main practical benefits and applications are of their findings? So if you, if you measure that in terms of who actually uses the methods on a daily basis, I would say that uh, it's central banks. It's central banks. Yeah, but all, certainly also other um, agencies at ministries and uh, agencies responsible for making business cycle forecasts and mm -hmm. things like that. And not to forget researchers. Research, so analysts and, um, and people like that as and well. And also academic researchers. And academic researchers. So I would say that basically all modern empirical right. macroeconomic research mm -hmm. builds on the methods that that the laureates have, have laid the foundation for. Mm -hmm. So these two laureates, they have developed <coughs> tools um, for interpreting historical macroeconomic data. Exactly. Would you say that their findings or their work actually enables us to predict or control the future? Or well, I mean, that's, that's a big question. Yeah. Uh, I certainly think that it has been very helpful for central banks in, in improving their policy and, and making, uh, making monetary policy better. And, and uh, it's, I mean, they have, their methods have implied that central banks know more or less what happens when they change the interest rate, what happens to unemployment, output, and inflation. And without such a knowledge, the monetary policy cannot be executed in, in a good way. So certainly it has been very helpful for them, but also in, and, uh, also for fiscal policy, what, what happens if you, uh, you know, propose a new, if you introduce a new uh, stimulus package or, or things like that, the effects of those measures can, can be analyzed with the methods uh, that, that uh, the laureates have developed. But one should realize that what they have devised is, is, is a method of constructing the models, the tools that we can use to answer these questions. They have not provided a complete finished model that never is going to be improved of. On the contrary, there is an enormous amount of improvement uh, uh, going on in various directions. And, and certainly the, the, the recent financial crisis has pointed to uh, uh, developments in, 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 in kind of new directions, so yeah. introducing financial markets in the system, uh, trying to understand what happens with monetary and fiscal policy when interest rates is at the lower bound, at zero, so you can't yes. do anything yeah. more. And these, th these features of the models were not much developed in the calmer times of the 90s, for example, or in the beginning of, of, of this uh, decade, but they will be now and are being developed now. Yeah, because their models, they've been in practical use for quite some time. Okay. I, I would say that they have kind of become the main tool at, for example, central banks uh, during the last 10 to 15 years. Okay. And um, so it's Thomas <coughs> J. Sargent and Christopher A. Sims 
and they've been they are um, they've been awarded the prize um, combined both of them. Now, what distinguishes their work from each other? <coughs> so it's um, the methods are slightly different, um, and they are applicable to slightly different aspects of economic policy. So Sims has largely focused on on what happens to the economy uh, if unexpected short-lived events occur. So that would be, if we talk about policy, it would be like a change in the interest rate, the change in the uh, interest rate set by the central bank or the Federal Reserve, or a change in the tax rate uh, that occur uh, unexpectedly. That would be the focus of SIMS. While Sargent has focused more on, on more permanent structural changes in the economy, including in economic policy. So, so what happens if you delegate monetary policy to an independent central bank that is asked to target the particular uh, goal of inflation, for example? Or if you introduce stringent budget rules, or for example, that says that you can't, like in Sweden, we have a target of the budget surplus of 2% per year. What happens if you change that or introduce another rule like that? So, so strict changes in those kind of structural or systematic aspects of ex economic policy, the effects of those on the economy. That's the focus of Sargent. Yeah. So, in other words, they complement each other very well. Yes, the they findings. do. And there is a continuous discussion between them, which is kind of interesting, yeah. that uh, how, what's in, in between, what can be done with the different methods and how, in what way do they complement each yeah. other. So, yeah. so, uh, so the, the discussion between the lower, they, they're Work has been very complementary, and not the least the discussion between them has been very fruitful, I think. Exactly. And how, in the current climate of financial instability, how important is their work? Well, without the, the knowledge that their methods have given to central banks, I think it would have been a much, much worse situation. Um, and, but it's also, as, as I earlier noted, it's it's, it's important to note that their methods are continuously improved upon, and, and uh, we don't really have a good answer to what happened during the financial crisis, nor what we should do in order to, to uh, 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 reduce the risk of something like this happening again. But we are pretty sure that the methods that they have developed will help us in finding the answer to questions like that. Although answers to questions like this are never, you know, never, final. We will, we will never know the answer. <laughs> not, um, not the, we come closer and closer and learn, mm. but social science is like that, that there is never, actually even natural science is like that, there is no, never a, a, a final answer to almost any question. No. Professor John Hasser, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.